the tutorials of the Starship Mayfair, its 10-minute mission to seek out new players and new tables, to boldly teach you a game like you've never played before. Welcome to the White Glove Demo for Star Trek Catan. Star Trek Catan puts you in command of a Federation fleet, tasked with establishing outposts and supply lines through uncharted regions of Federation space. The first player to reach 10 points wins. But you don't have to go it alone. You and your co-captains can call on some of Starfleet's most legendary figures. Ensign Glover, you're hardly one of Starfleet's best. We let you test command a ship once. Once. Some plans are just crazy enough to work, Glover. Some are just crazy enough to get you demoted. This is the Federation territory you'll be exploring. The territory consists of 19 randomly assigned sectors. Every game you'll play with a different territory. Each sector features a key planet, which provides important resources to your fleet. Yellow planets produce food. Blue planets produce water. White gas planets produce oxygen. Red planets produce titanium metal. And green planets produce dilithium fuel. There's also one asteroid field which produces nothing. The Klingon Battlecruiser starts the game here. Each planet receives a number token. Each number represents a possible result from two six-sided dice. Each of these number tokens is marked with a letter on the back. Starting with any outside corner, place the number tokens in alphabetical order, going counterclockwise around the board. Each player starts with two outposts and two starships on the board. For your first game, you can use the setup shown in the rulebook, or you can pick your own starting positions with a switchback start. Choose a random player to go first. If you're going first, place your first outpost on any intersection where the corners of the sectors meet. Then, place your first starship on a neighboring space route where the sides of the sectors meet. The next player clockwise then places their first outpost. You must always place any new outpost at least two spaces away from any other outpost, yours or an opponent's. Then, place a starship. Continue around the table until everyone has placed their first outpost and starship. Then, reverse order. The player who just placed gets to immediately place their second outpost and ship. When you place your second outpost, you receive one free resource from each neighboring planet. You also get one of the support cards. The first player to get a support card takes them based on their starting position, so they would take the A1 card, which is Uhura. Going counterclockwise this time, each player places their second outpost in ship and takes their free resource cards. Each player also takes a support card in that order. You always hand out Scotty second, Spock third, and Sulu fourth. Place the remaining support cards near the board and give the dice to the first player. Now you're ready to begin. At the start of your turn, roll the dice. Add up the total and find the matching planets on the board. Those planets pay out one matching resource card for each neighboring outpost. You get resource cards from your outposts even if it's not your turn. If you roll a 7, no one gets any resources. Instead, the Klingons attack. Anyone with more than 7 resource cards in their hand must choose and discard half of their cards rounded down. Then, you must move the Klingon ship to a new sector. You may then steal one resource card from any player with a station next to this sector. Take the card at random without looking. While the Klingons are in a sector, that sector cannot produce resource cards. After rolling for resources, you can spend your resource cards to build new starships and stations. You may build as many new things each turn as you can afford. By spending one dilithium card and one tritanium card, you may place a new starship on the board. You may place new starships on any empty space route next to another of your starships or stations. By expanding outward with new starships, you can build new outposts. For one dilithium, one tritanium, one oxygen, and one food, 
you may build a new outpost at an empty intersection next to one of your spaceships. Again, the new outpost must be at least two intersections away from any other station. Each of your outposts give you one point towards the ten points you need for victory. For two oxygen and three water, you may upgrade one of your outposts into a starbase. Starbases are worth two victory points each. Additionally, when a planet produces resources next to a starbase, it pays out two resource cards instead of one. Lastly, for a water, a food, and an oxygen, you may draw one development card. Development cards give you some sort of special bonus. You may draw and keep as many development cards as you like, but you may only play one per turn and not on the same turn you bought it. Most of the development cards say Starfleet Intervenes. When you play a Starfleet Intervenes card, you may move the Klingon ship to a new planet, stealing a resource as normal. Playing a Progress card gives you some sort of immediate special effect, such as extra starships, extra resource cards, or even stealing resources from the other players. A few development cards give you victory points. You don't need to play these cards, just keep them hidden until you have enough points to win the game. These cards represent important people or discoveries, such as captured enemy ships or even a time warp. Glover, what? Don't touch that. You don't know what it'll... Um, wait, what were we talking about? Sorry, I just got this weird feeling of deja vu. You're right, Glover, probably wasn't anything important. Moving on, in addition to building, you may trade resource cards during your turn. On your turn, you may trade resource cards with the other players, whatever you can agree to, so long as each player in the trade is giving away at least one card. If all else fails, you can always trade in four of a kind to the bank, in exchange for one of any resource. If you have a station next to one of the trading posts on the edge of the board, you can get more favorable terms with the bank. This trading post lets you trade in three of a kind for any one resource card. This trading post lets you trade in two oxygen cards for any one resource card. When you're finished trading and building, pass the dice to your left. The next player starts their turn by rolling for production. If you are the first player to build a chain of five starships with no breaks or opposing stations interrupting it, you immediately take the longest supply route special card, which gives you two victory points if you can hold on to it. If another player builds a longer route than you, they immediately take the longest supply route card from you. Likewise, if you are the first player to play three Starfleet Intervenes development cards, then take the largest Starfleet special card, also worth two victory points. If another player plays more Starfleet Intervenes cards than you, they immediately take the largest Starfleet card from you. In addition to your resource and development cards, each player also has one support card, representing a character from the TV show. During setup, each player is assigned a specific support card based on the turn order. Leave the rest to the side of the board. These cards form the support card display. When you receive a support card, make sure the A side is face up. Each support card gives you a special ability, which you can use once during your turn. Chief Helmsman Hikaru Sulu lets you change the heading of one ship at the end of a supply route. The Kirk and Spock cards can also use their abilities on another player's turn, depending on the die roll. After using your support card, you may either exchange it with one of the available support cards in the display, or you may flip it over to the B side of the card. When you use the card with the B side showing, you must return it to the display and take a new character, A side up. You may only use each character once per turn, and you may not use a character card on the same turn you receive it from the display. And pretty important, you cannot trade your card with the display until you use its ability. 
Kirk isn't going anywhere until somebody rolls a 7. Play continues until someone has 10 points during their own turn between stations, development cards, and special cards. The first player to 10 points wins. And that's Star Trek Catan, a game that boldly goes where no game has gone before. Sterling display of command today, Ensign. And you know, I can't remember why we demoted you. Let's see what you can do with a real starship. Glover, don't reverse the polarity. The polarity was just find the way it... Ah! Oh. oh dear. Join us next time where we figure out exactly where we've landed in the Star Trek Federation Space Expansion.